Hey guys, welcome to another video from nzpocketguy.com Today we're going to be doing things a little bit differently We're going to be listing for you our 10 tips to make the most out of the New Zealand outdoors while experiencing the New Zealand outdoors Hey guys, it's Robin and Laura here from NZ Pocket Guide and in this video we're going to be going through the 10 tips to make the most of the New Zealand outdoors. So let's get started with point number one, which is be prepared. That's right, the New Zealand Outdoors has a ton to offer to you, but it also has a few kind of dangers. Um, mainly the sun, for example, is extremely harsh in New Zealand, so make sure that you have sunscreen. Um, the weather also in New Zealand is extremely changing. We, we keep on saying in all our videos that the New Zealand weather has four seasons in one day. So you may want to be sure to have enough layers in order to be able to put some layers in or take some layers off just in case the weather changes quite a lot. You may also want to check a bit of information on all the tracks or outdoors activities you want to be doing. If you're going in the water in New Zealand, you're planning on doing some kayaking or some swimming, just be aware of where the reefs are, for example, which is the part of the beach which is kind of taking you out to sea. Um, so, and also be aware of the wildlife. There is also a lot of wildlife in New Zealand. Nothing too dangerous, but something you want to be prepared of so you know how to interact with it at some point. Any other tips for that, Laura? Um, just also, yeah, make sure that you have plenty of water, no matter on what length of walk or activity that you're doing. Uh, also, yeah, make sure you sort of look at the duration of how long you're going to be outside as well. If you're just doing a short walk, you can definitely get away with just a bottle of water or just, a, you know, an extra layer just in case or a rain jacket. But if you're going to be spending the whole day outdoors, make sure, like Robin says, you're going to be prepared for four seasons in one day because, yeah, that definitely could happen. All right, the next tip on our list is go slowly. Yeah, so um, a lot of the walks in New Zealand, um, people sort of rush through them, mainly because they've planned too much in limited time. But the, definitely the best way to explore the outdoors is to just take it slow, um, enjoy walks quite slowly and take in the scenery because a lot of people that we talk to, they sort of say that they regret trying to rush through things and just try and do like the fastest time in the walks. That's really not what it's about in New Zealand. Um, it's more about just appreciating the amazing scenery that you have around you. And on top of that, the, one of the best uh, advantage of going slowly when uh, you know walking around New Zealand or even doing anything on the outdoors is that the wildlife will actually accept you much more. So if you go on a normal walk and you walk a little bit slowly or even stop sometimes, you will see some birds literally coming down from the trees to come and feed on the small insect that you may have disturbed on the track with your footsteps. Uh, if you are doing some kayaking or some you know swimming or anything like that, you may have some seals which are you know not afraid of you because you're not zooming past by. Um, and uh, you know it's the same thing for like you know all type of wildlife in New Zealand. Same thing if you are in the water and you're doing some dolphin swimming, which is a very popular outdoor activity to do in New Zealand usually your tour guide will always advise you to kind of not act like completely erratic or frantic but just kind of like just relax in the water sing a little bit it actually attracts the dolphin they say that very often yeah and uh, yeah you'll be able to actually uh, make the most out of uh, that experience so that, that's pretty cool yeah also moving on to our next point because it fits in quite well with uh, going slowly is take photos so even if you don't have anything to take photos for like you know a lot of people like to post on like instagram or facebook or make scrapbooks and stuff but even just the sort of process of taking photos allows you to sort of take in the scenery much more and sort of concentrate on yeah just the place around you just the sort of taking a photo and framing some awesome scenery or wildlife or something just sort of uh, well we find it helps you sort of appreciate what you are seeing a lot more because you're actually taking the time to stop and take it in Yes, and actually one of the uh, one of the things that I love about taking pictures is that Laura does have a camera with the decent size zoom. And so when we just stop and actually try to take pictures for you guys of birds or, or anything like that, you know, when we were filming, for example, New Zealand's Biggest Gap here, that is a video series that you can find right here on YouTube, our challenge was to tackle 365 activities in 365 days all around New Zealand. And we did it. 
but quite a quite a few times when we wanted to have some extra shots for you guys we literally just stopped doing a walk or doing an activity for a good 30 minutes and we therefore had plenty of time to look at the birds and Laura was uh, was using the camera to get super close up to them and I'd never seen like you know tui birds or, or, mm. or bell birds or, or even kereroos which are New Zealand wood pigeons uh, that close it's so yeah. so much fun so it's yeah, kind of like using binoculars but you have your, exactly. your camera is kind of like your binoculars exactly <laughs> Um, uh, by the way, if you want to see some more some pictures of New Zealand, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram. I'm not going to talk about it for hours. There is a link in the description of this video. Okay, the next thing on our list is to make some, some time during your itinerary for some walks. Yeah, absolutely. Just like we're doing now. Um, New Zealand has hundreds of walks. And um, yeah, a lot of people that we talk to, again, they say that they never realise how many walks there are in New Zealand and they wish they'd actually taken the time to um, fit walks into their itinerary. So yeah, whichever, any town that you go to in New Zealand, there's usually about 10 walks surrounding it. Um, and yeah, so there's walks that range from like 30 minutes or even 15 minutes to multi-day hikes. So you can definitely find something to suit your fitness level. There's also walks that are suitable for wheelchairs and strollers and stuff. So if you're traveling with a family, there's usually options for that too. So yeah, walks, there's loads of them in New Zealand and they're the best sort of free way to experience the landscape and the great outdoors. Exactly. Um, and just, uh, you know, a piggybacking on uh, this tip, I'm going to move on to the next tip that we have, which is uh, make sure that you check nzpocketguide.com, which is the largest travel guide to New Zealand, and which is written by Laura and I. And on there, we're listing thousands of walks around New Zealand. So that will allow you to discover activities to do in New Zealand, which are way less popular than the main things which are usually promoted and that will allow you to uncover amazing short walks that won't take you a lot of time but really going to get you in the heart of the New Zealand wilderness exactly like this walk that we're doing right now which is only a 30 minute walk but if you look around oh there's a bird just right here look at that oh, oh, that's yeah. awesome yeah yeah it's a tom tea, that's <laughs> yeah so. anyway uh sorry <laughs> about that that will get you right in the heart of the New Zealand wilderness exactly like I just um, mentioned right now and it's just really awesome yeah Next Anything on else? the list. Oh, well, um, no, we'll move on to the next point. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so next on the list is um, if you're traveling with a family, make it entertaining for the kids. So um, while you're traveling around, don't just drag them along onto anything. It needs to be whichever sort of group you're with. You need to sort of like um, educate why you're going to specific places. And as you learn things, make sure the whole group knows what you're, what you're learning along the way. Yeah. Um, do you have anything to add to that? Well, I feel like if you are going uh, to do, uh, to do a, a little bit of a walk with the kids, that's usually the activities that kids find a bit less entertaining. So if you do actually research or, you know, simply you go on our website and you check on nzpocketguide.com two or three facts about the, the walk that the kids can look forward to. You know, building anticipation is the best way for people to actually get excited about something. Uh, you know, that's what, well, uh, movie theaters do all the time. They build anticipation for movies and then you love the movie because you've been waiting for it for that long. So if you kind of just tell them, okay, you're going to be able to see maybe this kind of bird or that kind of bird, or you'll be able to see that lake and that lake is created by a volcano or, you know, like all those kind of things. Um, kids usually absolutely love that. And I think that's a great way to kind of get them to enjoy even the most mundane outdoors activity, which are walks. But I just want to point out that most of the walks in New Zealand are nowhere near mundane. They are no, fantastic. No, absolutely not. There's always something amazing to see. Yeah. And speaking of amazing things to see, well, if you can do your bit to keep New Zealand wilderness amazingly beautiful and respect the environment, that'd be amazing too. So that's our next tip. Yeah, so this is something that's quite dear to our hearts. Um, New Zealand does have amazing wilderness landscapes. So um, when you're enjoying the outdoors in New Zealand, make sure that you basically left it um, as you found it. Make sure that you take rubbish away with you. If you have a day pack or something, keep all your rubbish in there until you get to the pr appropriate uh, rubbish bins or recycling bins as well. Um, and also, yeah, just also make some choices on like the purchases, make sure that it's sort of like, um, you're not creating too much waste while you're in New Zealand. Um, make sure that you, yeah, you're buying stuff that has m like very limited packaging. Reuse water bottles, for instance. Um, and yeah, just 
make sure you stick to the trails and there's well-formed trails for the hikes around New Zealand so don't stray off and you know damage some vegetation that's around the trails just yeah and follow the instructions from your tour guides as well they usually um yeah they usually know what they're talking about know how to keep the environment safer and so they can help you do the same and speaking of tour guide uh, that's a very good segue for my next point I think you should make sure that when you plan your itinerary around New Zealand or even just your weekend escape from Auckland you want to balance very well uh, paid and free activities around New Zealand it's really easy to break the bank there is so many activities which are 200 400 dollars around New Zealand and if you do too many of those well you won't be able to make the most out of your trip and you'll end up you know breaking the bank in only a few days but if you do balance wisely free and paid activities around New Zealand you'll be able to make much more out of your escape weekend or trip in New Zealand so make sure to include some walks around the country not all the walks are crazy backpacking style hike that you will need to you know pack a tent and stay in the wilderness for days uh, many many walks are very short very awesome to enjoy uh, there is also amazing amount of uh, bird colonies seal colonies to explore and all that is free there is a ton of free museums as well around New Zealand it's not really to do about the outdoors but just make sure that you also have uh, on your itinerary a ton of free activities as well we list a ton of free activities on nzpocketguide.com just because we know how important it is to have a well-balanced itinerary yeah so another thing you can do for planning your trip to the outdoors is um consider the different types of accommodation options Ooh, moving on to our next point all right oh yes yeah, that's, that's, that's a good that's a good keep going <laughs> i'm already i'm already thinking on the next thing so um, so there's different accommodations that actually help you experience the outdoors. For instance, there's plenty of campsites around New Zealand, so you can enjoy the outdoors if you're camping in tents or in camper vans. Um, but be aware that this sort of accommodation is not suitable for everyone. Although the idea of camping is quite glamorous for New Zealand, it's, um, or not so glamorous, but you know what I mean. It's kind of like, you know, just sort of sleeping under the stars sounds quite cool, but, um, yeah, usually you need to also bear in mind that it gets quite cold <laughs> um, on, a, on a night in New Zealand compared to the daytime. Um, and you know, sometimes cramping like a lot of people if you're traveling in a group, um, cramping a lot of people in a small camper van and this sort of thing can be quite uncomfortable. And we see that a lot of people start off their trip um, with the intention of camping in mind, but then they end up having to switch like halfway through their trip <laughs> to doing Airbnbs or yep. staying in hotels and stuff because they realize that it's not what they imagine. So make sure, first of all, that camping and stuff is the right um, is the right option for you because otherwise there are other options. You can go and stay in holiday parks, which although it's still um, really appropriate for camping and um, for having like camper van, staying in camper vans there. Um, they also have other facilities so you can still go and have a hot shower, you can still um, you know do your laundry and there's like playgrounds and stuff for the kids so you know it still has other options to make it not quite so um, uncomfortable but still having an outdoorsy experience. On the other hand I just want to point out that if you never tried uh, you know traveling around New Zealand in the camper van or something um, at the moment especially it's really cheap to rent some mm. like small camper van so if you're a couple like us get yourself into a camper van and try it for a weekend it is yeah. a ton of fun it's definitely worth worth trying just know that you can't camp everywhere when you're in a camper van so make sure that you inform yourself of where you can go and what you can be doing and there is a ton of information on that on the website as well it's nzpocketguide.com if i haven't mentioned it enough so far yeah anything else to add or should i wrap it up i think we can wrap it up all right guys so this brings up to the end of this video thank oh, there's you one more point oh, what there's one more point we were about to oh, miss out yes that's true <laughs> mine uh okay so the last one that we have is don't trust the dock which is department conservation times yes yeah, so um <laughs> the really cool thing about the walks around new zealand is that most of them are managed by the department of conservation and they do a really good job of putting signs up so you know what walks are available in an area and how long they're approximately going to take but these timings can be um they can be a little off sometimes so in some places around the country they're usually way too um, long for actually how long it's going to take for instance and um, if a walk is going to say it's an hour long to do 
sometimes they can be like half an hour and you wonder like how is that taking like people an hour to walk like where did they get these times from but on the other hand we have been to other areas of the country where the times have been spot on even if you're walking constantly and you're not taking any breaks like for in instance, Stewart Island for instance in Stewart Island we were doing a multi-day hike and then we were actually going like full out for the whole day and yeah well and then we realized it did actually take us five hours to yeah. cross the <laughs> island so you know you do have to although you have to take the timings with a pinch of salt it's it's kind of good to just sort of realize that they're not always going to be very accurate um do you have anything to add to that no i think that's very astute like there is a lot of time where you're just going to start getting comfortable with the uh, department conservation timings on the signs and then you're going to be completely you know all thrown off uh, the sands because well this timing will be extremely accurate this one won't be so just be aware that uh you know like know that those times are what you need to plan for it and uh and then after you you know yeah I, I'd, I'd say like stick to those time think about it but always have a bit of leeway that's yeah. that's all i'm gonna say all right so now it's the real time for me to wrap up this video uh <laughs> after this little fake out right here anyway uh thank you very much for watching if you find it useful like and subscribe it's a great way to say thank you for all our hard work especially that little like button yep. if you guys uh, did find this new style of video useful just uh, you know or fun just tell us in the comment below so we know we need to do more of those we need usually, to do more hikes and i'll be happy <laughs> uh, usually we do most of those videos in like a studio environment where you can hear us better but we'll see we'll see what this one uh, gather interest wise and we'll see what we do yeah. in the meantime thank you for being so awesome uh thank you thank you for being one of our subscribers i mean twenty thousand of you you can you can't you know you guys can't can be wrong <laughs> and look at that we finish exactly at the time when we are reaching the edge of the lake so we leave you with the last pan of the beautiful lake thank you very much for watching guys bye bye that's cool